Hey ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back. So yesterday I was working out in the shop on a couple of pairs of shoes that were mailed into us. Now, both of these folks wanted just basic resoles done to their shoes. But when we got them in house, I noticed that the welts had been worn down quite a bit and really to do a good job, they were gonna to need to be replaced. So that got me to thinking, how about we do a video where I go over a shoe and I tell you things, or should I say, I tell you some places that you need to look at before taking your shoes to a shoe cobbler. Because like taking your car into the shop, sometimes there are hidden expenses and I want to make you aware of those before you take them in. But before I do that, please give me a big thumbs up to let the algorithm know that you are enjoying this content and share this video with your friends and family, as well as subscribe to the channel. We have a lot of this type of information coming and you do not want to miss it. All right, let's head out to the shop and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay guys, we're here in my shop. Let me give you some examples of things that you may be able to see and things that may be hidden, but things you need to be aware of because they can be additional cost. Okay, so I have a pair of Carmina loafers here. Now these were the shoes that were sent unto us to be resold. But if I were just the average guy wearing this pair of shoes, I would think to myself, okay, they're a brand new pair of Carminas. They've never been resold before. All I need is a new resole. Unfortunately, it's not the case. So as you can see on this pair of Carminas, right along the insides of the welt, you can see that the welt was cut down very, very close at the factory. Now, I see this all the time with Italian, Spanish made, British made, a lot of the European made shoes. Um, they have a very slim look to it. One of the ways that you obtain that slim look is by at the factory when you're trimming down the welt, they, they you know, they trim it down very, very closely on the blade. And what that does is it cuts the welt very, so the welt starts out about like this size and your stitches lie in that welt. Well, every time you use it on the sander, you can cut it, cut it, cut it, cut it until you basically have no welt left. And that's what happened on this brand new pair of Carminas. The welt has just been cut down too much. And unfortunately your shoe cobbler, myself, I cannot restitch this welt. The, the needle is just gonna have a very hard time getting into that welt. It can't be reused. So this customer is going to have to buy a brand new welt. So before you take your shoes into the shoe cobbler, make sure you are checking your welts or at least asking your shoe cobbler if the welts are okay before you get started. Okay guys, so this is another pair of shoes that were sent in to us. This is a pair of Allen Edmonds. Now this gentleman also sent this pair of shoes in to us for uh, a resole. Now he did want new welts, so I will give him that. He, he knew the fact that he was gonna need new welts, he's gonna need a new resole, but unfortunately this is one of the things you cannot see as a customer until the shoe cobbler has the shoe. The shoe's already been taken apart and this is when we noticed the problem. So as you can see on this pair of Allen Edmonds, we took the welt off. Everything looked great until we saw the gimming here. Now the gimming is this piece of fabric that goes along here and it's what holds the shoe and the insole together. The gimming is glued to the upper portion here and then the welt is stitched on and goes through that fabric gimming. Unfortunately, I cannot put a new welt onto this shoe because the gimming here has been pulled apart and it's just because it's so old it is worn out and the gimming now is going to have to be completely replaced before I can put on a new welt. Now again, that's an added expense that a lot of times you will not know it until the shoe has already been taken apart by the shoe cobbler. So again, just keep that in mind that there are hidden expenses that sometimes you're not gonna be able to see until the shoe's already been taken apart. Okay guys, this is probably one of the biggest instances that we see all the time when shoes come into our shop. And it's one that you can definitely prevent if you just keep an eye on your shoes. Now, as you can see on this pair of Allen Edmonds, again, another pair, the customer has worn into this heel block here. Um, like I tell a lot of folks, the heel block, which is this hard portion of stacked leather, oftentimes it, it's wood, that is kind of like the wheel or the rims on your car. And then the top lift or the heel pad, this rubber piece, is the part that's kind of like your tire. When you start wearing into your tire and before it blows out, you don't continue to ride on your rim. You want to replace the tire beforehand. 
And but unfortunately, so many guys will just continue to wear past this hill pad. They will wear right into this hill block. And that, my friends, is a hidden expense. The shoe cobbler cannot just put a brand new hill pad on top of a hill block that has been worn out or else you will have a big gap right in between there. So you want to make sure that you're taking your shoes to the shoe cobbler and having him put on new hill pads before you wear into the block. Because if you don't, then what he's going to have to do is he's either going to have to build that portion back up to make it flat or he's going to have to replace the entire hill block, which again is an added expense either way. A couple of other things as well. I'll keep these two short. Some guys like to have the metal toe taps put up onto the toes here. Now again, I'm going to use this same shoe as a reference. If this guy wanted to have toe taps put on, you can see that he's already worn into the toe. Now, a shoe cobbler would not be able to put a metal toe tap on there because just like the heel pad, it's going to have a big uh, hollow cavity in there because he's worn that down too much. So a shoe cobbler is either going to have to build the front of that back up to make it flush or he's going to have to resole it before he can put that toe tap on. So again, make sure you're having your toe taps put on, preferably when you first get the shoe, or just know going into it that the shoe cobbler may charge a little bit extra to build that toe piece up before he puts on the heel pad. Okay guys, and the last thing, if you were one of those guys that wants to go preventative maintenance on your shoes, and maybe you're thinking, okay, I've already started wearing a hole into the bottom portion of the ball of my foot. I would just rather put on a protective sole protector, kind of like this one, and because it's a lot cheaper, and I don't want to pay for a full resole. Well, you can't do that if there's already a hole in the bottom of the sole. So if you want to put sole protectors onto the bottom of your shoe, make sure you are putting the sole protectors onto your soles when the sole is brand new, or make sure that you are doing it in a relatively quick time frame. You don't want to start wearing a big hole in the bottom of the ball of your sole and then try to put a sole protector on top of it to take the cheap route out. I can't tell you how many times I've had customers bring their shoes in, holes in the bottom of it, and they say, give me the cheapest thing you got, give me the $30 sole protector. Dude, it doesn't work that way. So make sure you're bringing them in beforehand. Okay guys, so I hope that information helped. Like I said before, there's nothing worse than taking your car to the shop and the mechanic calls you back with a laundry list of other things that need to be done to your car and you had not planned for it financially and you're just not ready for it. So I wanted to make you aware, again, of some things that you can be looking at on your shoes or your boots before taking them to your local cobbler, before you mail them into us or someone else. There's places, like I mentioned on there, the hill blocks, the well, et cetera, that you can be looking at before you make that decision on whether or not you want to have those shoes or boots resold, because oftentimes it can come at a hefty price tag. So again, I hope this information helped, and until next time, y'all have a good one.